Good day, YouTube. Today we're going to talk about the Yellow Wind Sage, who has been touted to be one of the toughest boss in this game. But personally, I find him to be a walk in the park, which was a big surprise. I cleared him within 30 minutes, I think on my sixth attempt. In fact, in my second and third try, it was so close that my neighborhood could hear me scream. So a couple of things to note before you go into combat with this guy. Firstly, keep close to him. If possible, try to stay between his legs. His long range attacks will hurt you. He has a whole wide range of arsenal of skills that are very difficult to avoid once you have a distance between himself and you. Secondly, try to use Cloud Rest when he changes into his wind form because he will then focus on your decoy and you will be safe for the most part. And thirdly, it is quite important to do the secret chapter and fight the secret boss Fuban in chapter 2 so that you can acquire the Wind Tamer Vessel. This will be very useful in your fight against the Yellow Wind Sage. So with all these three points in fact, let us proceed to talk about the battle. My rotation is largely consistent in all my attempts, I will just run through them for your benefit. When I get close to him, I will use stun and immobilize him. After that, I will pepper him with about 3 to 4 light attacks before I draw away. Then, I will use red type almost immediately. I want to use red type early so that I have a chance to re-manifest and use it a second time should I need to. And in this mode itself, what I want to do is again stay close to him and pepper the yellow wind stage with lots of light attacks. Light attacks will build up the energy bar that you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and once it is full, it is important to use the Red Tide's secret attack. Basically, you just need to roll dodge in any of the four directions and launch your heavy attack. You will have four different kind of secret attacks available. In this case, I use the one uh, where I roll dodge forward and you can see just how much damage it does to the boss and also it stun him and leave him on fire. At this point, right, I have reduced the Yellow Wind Sage to about like maybe two thirds of his health left and I think that's pretty good for a first act. For the second act, I would start off using the Wind Tamer Vessel and that would stun him for a while. I would use the Pluck of Many and I will bombard him with monkeys. Now this is the part where you see how important it is to stay close to him. Just flood him, light attack him, spam him with many attacks, build up your focus point but do watch out for your stamina. You should have at least one more immobilization spell left, use it during this time and if possible, use the Wandering White Spirit as well so you can deal massive amount of damage. After all your monkeys vanquished, I think he would be down to preferably just 25% health to 30% health and if luck is on your side, you will not have even used a single sip of your health potion. And this is a time where you need to keep steady. I know you need to heal, but try to keep close to him even when you're healing because this is the part where if you get too complacent, he can finish you off very very quickly. Stay close to him, don't let him run away, continue to attack his legs, slip behind him, attack him from behind and you should be able to finish him off very soon. Okay, some thoughts about this boss. I see a lot of parallels between chapter 1 and 2. The Yellow Wind Sage was very easy for me but I really struggled with the Tiger Vanguard which took me 3 days and same thing for the White Clad Noble which took me 3 days as well but I finished the Black Bear Spirit in double quick time. I think personally for myself I struggle a lot when it comes to bosses that require a lot of my mechanical skills to be intact. I need to react very quickly to complicated combos that have certain lag in between. That upsets the rhythm. I don't do so well in those. Whereas the bosses where I can fully exploit my spells, go up close, bash and spam, wham and bam, um, generally I have better luck in these contexts which just happens to be the context for the final two bosses. I think the game is great in a sense where different players will find challenges in different bosses just because we are good at some things and not so good in others so there's diversity in terms of mechanics and um, in the outcomes with the fight with the bosses. right? So I hope this little tutorial is of some use to you. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye and good luck.